Okay, let's get going. Hello, everybody in the Second Shift community. Um, I'm Jenny, and today I'm coming to you from sunny Los Angeles. Actually, it's not that sunny, but Los Angeles nonetheless, which is exciting. And I'm joined by my friend, my dear friend, Amy Cohen Epstein, and her friend, Alyssa Goodman, who is a holistic nutritionist. And I happen to be in LA, so we just thought it would be more fun to be here together versus sitting on Zoom separately. Um, and Alyssa, thank you so much for your time. This is a subject that's very near and dear to my heart um, because we spend so much time fighting for women and women's empowerment and women's health is the bedrock of that. So to be able to talk to two experts in this world is really important. Um, Amy has spent the last 20 years fighting for women's preventative health care and specifically in ovarian and breast cancer. In research, she started a foundation in honor of her mother, who I knew, who was a beautiful person, Linny Cohn, and the Linny Cohn Foundation for Ovarian Cancer Research has made a huge impact in thousands of women's lives, especially at-risk women. So thank you, Amy. And then Amy started a podcast called The Scene, which is like all things women and wellness. And it's fantastic and you should listen to it. And through The Seam, she introduced me to Alyssa Goodman, who is a holistic nutritionist and um, thinks that food can fight and prevent women's cancers and is the author of a book called Cancer Hacks. And I think just this is a fascinating topic. We're going to go like super specific and very granular and informative. I highly recommend people put any questions they have into the Q&A. I'm going to let Amy drive the conversation because you guys are the experts and you can just run with it. And then I'll come in and put in all the Q&A at the end. So to start, I'd love if you could both, uh, I gave like the tiny brief snapshot, but if you could both talk about your own experiences that got you into this world and your personal stories, because they're both so interesting and moving. So thank you. I'll let Amy go from now. Thank you. It's so fun having Jenny with me for a little extra tidbit of information. Jenny was my little sister in our sorority in college. Um, so I met her in her like really first days of freshman year at Duke. So true. growing up with her and um, seeing both of us start our careers and sort of dive into different worlds, but end up in a very similar place is really exciting for me. I started the Lynn Cohen Foundation in 1998, like Jenny said, when my mom passed away of ovarian cancer and found very quickly that the most impactful, best way to look at cancer, in particular women's cancers, is to look at it from the preventive side. And so that is what we have always done. We have four preventive care clinics um, in Los Angeles and New York that see women who are potentially at increased risk for breast ovarian cancer. From the beginning, when we started our clinics in 1999, 2000, we have always seen women who are in uninsured, underserved, and minority women. Over 30% of the women that come through our clinics fall in that category um, for the last 20 years. And that's something that I feel really proud of and I think is really important because it's we just have to reach as many women as we can, no matter what demographic they come from. In the last five years, um, I launched the SEAM, the Series for Education and Awareness in Medicine, which is really the educational platform of the Lynn Cohen Foundation. Because when you talk about prevention, um, especially for women, but for everybody, it's not just, you know, just looking specifically at cancer prevention and like research and scientific data in that arena. But for me, it's everything. So we're talking all things wellness before wellness was a word. Um, so nutrition, fitness, diet, health, mental health, all these things, I think looking at them through the preventive lens is the way to tackle things that could potentially come down the line. And through that, I have met incredible women, including Alyssa Goodman, who I think is of all the nutritionists, holistic nutritionists I've been able to speak to, um, Alyssa comes from a place of what I call real and comes from a place of actual like emotion and excitement about this topic in a way that most other people don't. Um, 
And I know that everyone listening is going to get so much information in the next, I don't know, 50 minutes from Melissa that I recommend getting your pen and paper out um, and asking lots of questions. And with that, I just want to hand it over to you, Alyssa, and let you introduce yourself and tell us your story. Thank you so much, Amy. I'm, I'm always so grateful to be and aligned with you. Um, sorry that it has to be in this arena with health, but I guess we're both in love with this arena. And I was going to add one thing to what you're saying about me. I'm a little obsessed with this whole category. <laughs> To the point where I think sometimes my friends and family are like, oh, enough already about talking about what's good and what isn't good and how to get healthy. So, um, but just my story in a nutshell, I think uh, the reason why I'm so obsessed is because most of my life, I didn't feel very good growing up. Um, I had a low white blood cell count when I was born. So I was sick all the time. I won't go into the details, but constantly sick, labeled a sick kid. Um, and then I was always behind the eight ball because I didn't feel good, no energy, you know, mentally not, you know, up to par. And so I was always having to overcompensate school and athletics. And I mean, I did everything when I was growing up. My parents were very type A, so they had me. I showed horses. I played tennis. I played badminton. You know, I went to great schools and it was just, it was always hard for me because of not ever feeling good and always being behind the eight ball. So I not only physically was not in great shape, but emotionally I kind of took a toll on me because I was like, I'm not good enough, I'm not doing enough. And that's a huge thing that I talk to my clients about and women, you know, they're like, I don't even, I always overcompensate. I don't even know what calm or feeling grounded or centered feels like and that just kind of like gets to my core when I hear that or the fact that you know we don't love ourselves because we don't feel like we're enough um that also gets me as well so that was me in a nutshell growing up and I grew up in Arizona went to college and moved to New York and went the fast pace in the advertising marketing world moved my husband from New York to LA because I was like oh I can't keep getting sick and living this lifestyle and eating really shitty food and out late at night and so stressed as well and moved him to LA. And the minute I landed in LA, basically six months later, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. So cancer at the age of 32, pre-kids. And I was like, holy shit, like all of this not feeling good and um, was, it took a toll on me, you know? And I also was a big sugar addict because my energy was always so low. I loved caffeine. Um, you know, just, I definitely was a foodie in those days. It was always dieting with, and those days it was, you know, the, it was the animal protein. It was the fat. It was, that was the big thing. Then it was the sugar-free cookies and all of that, the snack wells. I know you guys remember that, but my God, I can't believe all the shit we ate. Um, but got diagnosed three doctors later, they freaked me out with all the treatment. One of the doctors said to me, it was so profound and he said to me, he sat me down and he's like, are you happy with your life? And I'm like, what does that mean? Happy? Like, are, do you, do you love what you do? Are you passionate? You know, do, I mean, all these questions that no one had asked me ever. And I remember bursting into tears and being like, no to all of them. I don't even know what that is. I don't know what that feels like. And that was one of the biggest wake up calls in my entire life. I was like, Oh my God. You mean you can be happy? You mean you can have peace? You can have passion? So I went into therapy, self-help books, read everyone I could get my hands on, started. LA was a perfect place. Did yoga, went to acupuncturist, even did colonics. I mean, I you could, you name it, a natural paths. Um, there was a juice place walking distance from my house that's still there today. It was the first juice place in LA called LA juice. And I used to walk there every day to get my juice. I became a vegan, not a healthy one. So I don't really put, you know, say that's the good way to go, but I was able to do some radiation, not chemo, not all the radiation. And I healed myself. And I really feel that all of that taking control of my life was the cornerstone of getting me past that Hodgkin's lymphoma diagnosis. Went on to have two kids, um, but I did, I was radiated in my like, you know, thyroid area from here down because that's where they found the cancer was on my shoulder blade. And I ended up getting hypothyroidism Hashimoto's, which took years to diagnose, 
with the doctors. They had not even known what antibodies were or Hashimoto's in those days. Um, they were rarely like had hypothyroidism knew what that was either. So that took four, three to four years to get diagnosed. Then 11 years after my cancer diagnosis, my husband's diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So that was another huge wake up call in regards to, holy shit, like, what am I going to do now? Have a husband who's way farther along in the cancer diagnosis than I was. Um, and also to tell you that his dad died of cancer when he was two of melanoma. So the cancer diagnosis, I think, freaked him out a little more than me. I didn't think I was going to die from it. He had someone very close to him die from cancer. So I think that that was a big turning point for him. And like, he went into fight or flight mode like crazy. And he had two bone marrow transplants in a year and a half um, and basically passed away of fungal pneumonia at the age of 45. So that was crazy. Like, I mean, but I, I saw him just go downhill from Western meds. I mean, they just annihilated him. So I decided it took me a couple of years to get my feet on the ground with the kids. And I just went back to school and get certified in Eastern and Western nutrition and for two years because I just wanted to get healthy myself. I wanted to make sure my girls were healthy. I just wanted to get gain the most knowledge I could for them, for me, so I could raise two girls as a single mom because that's never what I had planned. And so I did that and then I just became a little obsessed with, <laughs> with the profession. I felt so good. You know, I started to learn all these ways of the easy ways of feeling good. And, um, and so I got hired to do these cleanses for some local restaurants, Cafe Gratitude and Cafe. I did some food for Earth Bar. They did an airport venue. I did that. And I also did some cleanses and I have a juice at Erewhon here in LA. Um, soon to have my super seed bar in Erewhon. So I just got thrown into this business. It was meant to be like, that was my passion. And I had found it and like everything opened up for me because it was like, this is what I love. So I got super lucky. And, you know, I would say 10 years later, um, I have my own cleanse that I cook and deliver to people in Los Angeles. I have a seven day reset online that I sell that I sort of, I try to update once a year and I see Zoom clients as well, which I love because being on a call with somebody and getting their background, emotional, spiritual, physical, you know, health or as an early age to now is so huge. Um, I can kind of tell what is the cornerstone and the crux of why they're sick and the cancer ones as well. They always tell me at the end of the call why they have cancer and what caused it. And so that's me in a nutshell. I mean, I just, I am definitely love what I do and I hope I continue in that way, but um, it's changed my life in every aspect. I feel younger, more energized than I did. Honestly, I could say at 30 or 40 years old and I'm 60. One. <laughs> I sometimes don't want to say one, but 16. Oh, yeah. I mean, That's I just feel like I want to be a spokesperson <laughs> for women because Crazy. you don't have to age. You don't have to age. You can feel better. You can, once you find, you know, your true essence of yourself and you love yourself and you find, you know, what really gets you peaceful and centered anything's possible. So, you know, anything and plus all the, <laughs> the other things, anything, I agree. You got to start with that. And we have to start deep in our soul and, and, you know, without being crass, really cut out the bullshit and cut out the things that don't make us happy. Um, but then we have to do other things like actually feed ourselves, our soul and our physical and mental health and our mental bodies to make sure that we know what's going on. So start with that. Yeah. Um, you talk a lot about hydration. And I think it's incredibly important. Um, so will you just start with yeah. hydration? Hydration, yeah. I know <laughs> it, these things, I think what's I so interesting. This, but I just yeah. need to know like on a day, like what do you eat? All <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> I just want to table that because like, like I need to be specific. like, how much water? What do you eat? What do you take? I know there are no secrets I here. Like, I mean, you're like, going to be shocked. Like, what's happening? I, You're going to be I shocked. Care it's... Care <laughs> and healthy no. eating. I will there's, 
there's no rocket science here. It's, you know, Amy and I talk about this all the time. Um, it's going back to the basics and the basics is, you know, hydration. Hydration is the master cleansing agent of the body. We are so dehydrated. The reasons why is because over-counter medications, all of them dehydrate us, even Advil, Tylenol, birth control, you know, everything that we take that has synthetics and fillers and all this crap in it, dehydrate us. Animal protein is a huge dehydrator. Sugar, dairy, you know, um, we all, all know caffeine already dehydrates us, right? So there are so many things that we do on a daily basis that dehydrate us and we don't eat enough hydration foods. We don't eat enough fruit and veggies, of course, and we don't drink, we drink water. We do drink water, some of us, um, but we don't have enough minerals in our body or basically in our soil that minerals, macro minerals, the magnesium, potassium, sodium, you know, um, all those things, calcium, all those things are what get the water into the cells. So we have an intracellular dehydration epidemic going on. I mean, sometimes I'll tell my clients to just get up and drink two cups of water in the morning and it changes their life before they do their coffee. It's crazy. So, you know, I'm a big, like the hydration is so important. Cells being hydrated is when our organs are like prunes, you know, when they're dehydrated, so they can't excrete and do the job of getting cleansed toxins and pathogens out of them. So they're hanging out in there just, you know, waiting for bad things to happen. And we have a lot of toxins in the body, a ton. So we just need to keep hydration going. And I, I mean, I have a couple of tricks. I mean, even sea salt, Celtic, you know, beautiful pink Himalayan sea salt has minerals in it. So that is great for hydration. I'm a huge juicer since I was diagnosed with cancer. So last, this last four years, the medical medium made celery juice a huge craze. I thank God for it. The reason why people are having such benefits with celery juice, it's full of minerals. So they're getting hydrated like they've never been before. Straight cucumber juice is incredible as well. So hydrating, so great for the adrenals and the kidneys. I mean, it cools down everything. Um, just doing a green juice in the morning is huge. Or if even if you just want to do like throw your vegetables into a smoothie, into a Vitamix or a blender too, that's good too, with some water. Um, you know, if you don't have a juicer and you don't want to take the time to do that. So that's eating more fruit just, you know, throughout the day. I mean, just cutting back your animal protein in terms of more of a side portion than a main portion is huge too. So those are all, I, I mean, I have a powder that I love. It's Ultima Replenisher hydrating powder. I talk, talked about it for 10 years and it has macro minerals and our family just loves it. It is sweetened with stevia, so it can get a little sweet and some people don't like stevia, but I dilute it like crazy. It's been a lifesaver for me. So I just put a travel packet in 32 ounces and drink it each day. And I feel hydrated, mentally alert. I get energy from it. Um, your motility, that's another thing. Go in the bathroom, like regularly, we go to the bathroom once a day and that's not enough. That's called constipated. I mean, people are kind of shocked. But we never say two. that. <laughs> I know, I'm like, wait, when I go to the bathroom once a day, I am really excited. You're like, and listen, like, today is not enough. Like, and so, okay, so break it down. How do we move stuff through our body yeah. more quickly? So again, it's that it's increasing the motility. It's, it's, it's hydrating. It's hydration. Um, the, the juices make us go, you know, the minerals, as you know, magnesium is a huge one. So you take magnesium before you go to bed every night, citrate, glycinate, or I put this new magnesium on the cleanse called mag 07. It's, it's kind of wild. It's an oxygenated magnesium. It's, it blows out your intestines, not, not in a bad way, but, and it makes you go to the bathroom. You don't want to take it on going, but if you're having some constipation issues, it's a lifesaver. It just, we have food in our intestines that hangs out in there forever. Like that's a problem like that, you know, animal protein, all those things takes 14 hours to get through the intestines plant-based food, veggies, fruit, you know, legumes, beans takes 90 minutes. So we have food hanging out in there and that's, you know, that's an issue. So we just, we need, you know, those proper, we got to get motility moving and, and go in the bathroom more than once a day. And that's hydration. That's, you know, eating roughage and fiber and, and getting that, get, no, not eating as much 
I mean, animal protein is not bad. I'm not saying that because I eat it um, and I eat some dairy and I do eat some gluten, but to like lessen those things so that, you know, that our body can move stuff through faster and inflammation doesn't get in the way. Tell us how you tell us about coffee and how you start your day, because a lot of people, you know, we know that caffeine, like you said, is dehydrating, but, you know, so many of us can't get out of our, we just can't get out of that habit. So tell us yeah. about how you, your take on coffee <laughs> and how to work that into your diet. How I many know. coffees should you have a day? <laughs> And well, like, first it depends what kind. Having, what kind. It was like, like the, is, is like oh, uh, horrible for you. That, okay. yeah. I'm a coffee addict. That is my, that's one of my vices. I love, I dream about coffee. Um, and it, the smell of it does wake me up in the morning and it makes me happy. So, but one thing about coffee, it is the most toxic food on the planet. It has mold and pesticides because it's coming in from all over the world. The demand for coffee is massive. We can't keep up with the demand because everyone is drinking coffee. Everyone's tired. Everyone wants a caffeine left. So um, yeah, so basically you have to drink organic coffee. That is a must because it is so, so toxic. Um, and you just have to do those two cups of water before your caffeine and that kind of, that helps. You know, and then you do two cups of water after, or you do a juice, but that is crucial for, you know, your cat, you don't have to give up caffeine. Um, we try not to overdo it like eight ounces, hopefully is enough for everybody, <laughs> but sometimes it isn't. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, I think coffee is, it's, there's something about it that is just a beautiful thing. Like I said, the smell and it wakes up our senses and it does sometimes help most people grow the bathroom. So there's some great things about it. it just has to be organic and you have to stay hydrated before and after, and you just can't overdo it and try not to put dairy in it. You know, if it's going to be some, you, if you don't like it black, I love it black. So you put some nut milk in it that's clean, that also doesn't have fillers and things like that, which, you know, there's there's some in the, out there that are just almonds and, and sea salt and water, which are better options. Um, and use stevia, which stevia is the one sugar that doesn't create more bad bacteria in the gut. So we need good bacteria as much as we can um, for many, many reasons. But if you can get like a really pure, beautiful stevia, Omica makes one, O-M-I-C-A is liquid. You put a few drops into anything to sweeten it and it doesn't taste like funky. So I love that. And you know, that's the best way to do it. Ta go into a little bit more about milks and the 7 million yeah. kind of milks that are on the, in the dairy case right now from everywhere from Rouse to Erewhon, <laughs> whatever is in New York or anywhere else in the country. Right, I know, no. I mean, dairy to me, Almost, I mean, sugar and dairy are pretty close to a no-no. Like, I wish well, I, I could not. I mean, sugar, that. we all know, but why dairy? Dairy, because it is massively inflammatory. It has a casein molecule that is really, really hard for us to break down. So there are two different casein molecules, one in cow's milk and one in goat and sheep. And so the goat and sheep is easier for us to break down, but the one in cow is really hard. And, you know, just dare, you know, the what, what they feed cows these days and just how they raise cattle is not so clean and healthy. And they give them hormones and antibiotics, right? And all this crap. So it really, dairy is really bad for you. It just, it causes inflammation. When I take people off of cheese and dairy for five days, they're different people, not just sugar. Like, let's just say go off of dairy and they're just, they feel so much better. Their digestive system works better. So, you know, I know we've been raised and told that dairy is good and that's important for calcium, but it really isn't. It does such a number, you know, in terms of it's, it's so inflammatory. So, and the women on this, um, and men, I guess there's no men on this, I guess, but, um, for the younger women on this, do you have any, um, suggestions on what age you take your kids off cow's milk? Um, Cause that's a question I get all the time and I don't know the answer to it. I mean, you know, still every, because most, of hormones? just because of the idea of that dairy in general is just a tough yeah. step to break down. It's not great for your body, but well, I know, you know, that's the go-to when your kids, you know, go to milk from I know. babies. I'm kind of hoping Amy, that it's becoming not the go-to anymore. Okay. I mean, 
you know, I did, I gave my girls goat milk as babies, as babies. Yeah. Um, so definitely it helped. I think, you know, there's a lot of like allergic reactions happening with cow's milk. I mean, I just, I hope that we can, we figure out how to get the nutrients other ways and we can, you know, there's, there's fabulous mineral supplements that are liquid that we can give our kids. And so they get their calcium, you know, I don't think they need cow's milk personally. So that's, that's my take on it. I sort of there when there was no other options. I know there was no other, but you know, they also, the nut milks out there, some of them aren't so great because there's a lot, you look at the bottle and there's a lot of ingredients on it. Right. So, you know, Malk, M-A-L-K makes a great one that is, but I don't know if that's across the country. I'm hoping it is. It's just very clean. They make an oat milk. That's great. A cashew milk and a nut milk uh, and a almond milk. They're all creamy. They're all delicious. And they're just three ingredients. And I'm trying to think there's, um, I think it's called uh, three trees or one of the other brands too. That's also great. There's more and more of those coming out that have just three ingredients on them yeah. that are better options. So, um, for a nut milk, um, you know, sometimes people though, with a creamer, they definitely need some of the fillers or things in it to make that, that nut milk creamy coconut milk's great. You know, if you like the taste of coconut, so you just want to go if you can with this clean as products as possible. What is the correlation? I mean, this is a very big question, but if you're thinking about, you know, your own health and what are the things that you think are like the most toxic and relatable to cancer in your experience and and the clients that you've seen where you've seen the dramatic results in a change of behavior? Okay, I, I would say that the first one is emotional well-being. So there, you know, and I know, Amy, you probably know Kelly Turner, right? Mm-hmm. So her book is one of my favorite books. It's Radical Remission, Radical Hope. Um, it's all my cancer clients that I talk to on a daily basis. It was, they had trauma growing up. They never resolved the trauma. They, once you get into like a trauma mode or any kind of fear in your life at an early age, you go into a fight or flight mode. So bottom line, you're living in this, you don't really know because it's all, you know, your fight or flight is like, you know, you're constantly pumping out adrenaline cortisol. You're constantly kind of sort of looking over your shoulder. When's the next shoe going to drop, you know, or um, you're scared in a, and you're never really calm and you don't know how to calm down your central nervous system. You just don't know how to go into a parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest mode. You're in a sympathetic nervous system. So your immune system is compromised on a daily, hourly, minute to minute basis. So eventually it's going to break down. Not everybody is going to break down. You know, not everybody's going to go there, but you know, then, then I would say it's sleep. If you don't, if you sleep by six hours, like it's a killer, like we need to rest and we need to recover and we need to like cleanse the body and it does it at night when you sleep. So I'm a big eight plus hour girl. Then the next I would say would be food. You know, it's the sugar, gluten, dairy, processed food. It's all the crappy stuff that we eat that we don't, we don't realize. And we've eaten it a lot growing up. I mean, I had my fair share, you know, I didn't start eating clean till 10 years ago or 12 years ago, as I do now. So I had a lot of years of crappy, crappy food. So, um, and love sugar and sugar, you know, just also puts your body, not just sugar is bad for the cells and it makes them acidic, but it puts your body into more of fight or flight mode. Cause it just hype, it hy- hypes you up, you know, and then the dairy and the gluten and it, it's inflammatory for the gut. So inflammation doesn't really get yourself, you get your body into a place where everything works properly. You know, so I would, I would, the bad yeah. cancer cells or any bad cells for that. Yeah. Moment. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, you know, we need to feed the cells nutrients and we're not getting nutrients to cellular over the gut. You know, I don't even think well, I work on my gut. I don't even think my gut's probably that healthy, but I still, I still worked on it for years, but our guts are so unhealthy because we've had too many antibiotics and over-the-counter drugs and the stress kills the microbiome and the food that we've had and the products we put on our body, you know, they all have, you know, or we're exposed to the water and the air and toxins and 
it's really done a number on our microbiome and in our artisanal walls aren't that healthy. So we don't break down the food the way we're supposed to. We don't break it down to the place where we can absorb these vitamins and minerals. That's the bummer. So we're cellular deprived of vitamins and minerals. And we, even when we, we take play microbiomes to those listening who don't know what that means. Yeah, it's the beneficial. It's like the microbiome is the bacteria in the gut. It's like we have, you know, trillions of bacteria in our body and the gut is 70% of where the immune system whole lies. So there's that microbiome is really crucial for blocking out toxins and, you know, viruses and bacteria and parasites and all that stuff. Um, it needs to be healthy. It needs to be healthy to break down our food. It needs to be healthy to, you know, basically create a good mood for ourselves. 90% of serotonin is produced in the gut. So it's crucial to have our gut be healthy. And, um, and most of us aren't, you know, not to say that it's, you know, it just is our life that we've led. So, and when we get stressed, our digestive system completely shuts down. So you could be eating really healthy salad in front of you and you're stressed. You're not going to absorb any of that food. You're not going to break it down, which is really sad. So that's why I love, and that's why I created the soup cleanse. And that's why I, I love juices because it's a liquid IV going right into the bloodstream, right into the cells. It bypasses the gut. So you don't even have to think about digesting it. Even smoothies are better, you know, with, with the veggies or greens powder, even soups are a little better because it's just easier on the digestive system and you can absorb these nutrients. So I love, you know, a juice and a soup and all of those things because you're, then you are getting those lots of vegetables in your diet, you know, easily and your gut doesn't have to work too hard. Can I ask, yeah. you mentioned cellular regeneration. So I assume that's very helpful if you're thinking about illness and you want your body to be, op, you know, healing itself and working most optimally. What does that exactly mean? And what are things that you can do to like make yourself as healthy and, and regenerate, especially if you're healing from something? I mean, I really would say again, you know, it's your mind is so powerful. And there's so many stories out there where people heal themselves from all different kinds of health issues by believing that can heal, by believing their body is like powerful. And, you know, I think that is cellular regeneration, rejuvenation. I think that, you know, there's a guy, Joe Dispenza, who is a really big guy in the wellness space who heal, he was riding his bike and was hit by a semi truck and broke every bone in his back and his body. And he didn't, he basically healed himself back to life. I mean, he healed his back by laying down for, I think it was like a year, but mentally it's a true story. He healed. So I think that, you know, we got to mentally believe that we can heal. Cause I think our cells know what to do. Our body knows what to do. I think, you know, the stress is really important to, you know, get the body into as much as we can, as often as we can, a de-stressed mode. The sleep also is when our, when our body, you know, regenerates. And I think cells regenerate then. I think when cells get, you know, hydration and what I was saying with their vitamins and minerals that they need. So they're not acidic um, and they're not unhealthy. I think that I'm a huge intermittent faster. So I love giving my body a break to like regenerate you know, the cells as well. I mean, prolong or fast mimicking is also really popular these days with prolong. And um, the guy from uh, Longo from the Longevity Center has put together a five day program where you can actually kill off the bad cells. It's called cell autophagy, where, you know, you put your body into a fasting mode where you kill off bad cells. He's lots and lots of research showing that it kills off cancer cells, as well as really great research as to doing this fasting mimicking protocol before chemo, where it's really been chemo works better and faster and more efficiently. It's been really fascinating. So a girlfriend of mine just came out with a really healthy prolong called Chroma Wellness. I've heard you guys of it. Have to check it out. It? It yeah. K-R-O-M-A. What yeah. is it? 
So, and she just, I don't know exactly yet. I haven't gotten the kit, but I think I'm getting it this week. But, you know, I think it's like, those are things that I feel very much, you know, there's a lot of supplements out there for the mitochondria and, you know, cellular regeneration, but I like to stick with just kind of the basics of, you know, of it. I mean, you can, we, you could definitely go into, I mean, I do NAD, which I think is, I love, which is a, um, you know, it goes into, it gives the cells energy and what does that mean? NAD, what is NAD that? I can't, I can't pronounce the actual word, but it's a, it's B6. It's actually just, it basically has the ability to give cells optimal energy, you know, so that that's kind of one thing that I feel for anti-aging has been amazing. Um, but there, you know, there's David Asprey does a lot of stuff from Bulletproof on mitochondria and longevity and, you know, all that stuff. But I feel like for, well, for me, it's been really the basics of, you know, being able to de-stress, come to terms with my trauma and my emotional well-being, come to terms with who I am and that my, that, you know, I have the ability to just overcome anything. And I think that, you know, can be as simple as that and eating healthy. Will you, okay. Will you just go through your day at this point? which Jenny wanted you to start with. So here's what we're going to do. I want to answer the, yeah. this question. Then I have a question for you about how like Vinny Khan is integrating okay. this kind of being into the preventative care and cancer. And then we have a bunch of questions in the Q and A. So being mindful of time, okay. we'll go into that after because they seem like they would be questions I would want to ask anyone. Yeah. And, so, and in that, when you're going through your day, you talk to us about coffee and water in the morning and such, but other things that you bring into your diet that we can all you know, take away wherever we are in the world and be able to sort of integrate into our own nutrition plan. Um, And then why some of those things in particular are really helpful to fight inflammation or help our gut digestion, things like that, I think would be great. Okay. You, this is going to take a long time. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) People are like, how many supplements do you take? No, no. So you know, I get up and do my two cups of water. Um, and basically then go to my call. I do, I do meditate for a few minutes in the morning. I never look at my, I put my phone down at 8 PM and I don't look at it till 8 AM. That's kind of a religious thing for me. So, because that's a killer. So then I meditate in the morning and I do, um, do some yoga, a little bit stretchy. I definitely have to get back in my body and just, you know, ground myself. I'm a huge journaler too. I run very high energy. You probably can tell I'm anxious. Um, so I have to journal down like my frustrations or my anxieties on paper to get them off. So I don't carry them through the day. Then I do my coffee. I put collagen powder in my coffee. I love that. It's fantastic. It's a bovine collagen powder. Great for the gut. Great for the immune system. Great for like healing the intestinal walls and all of the, you know, tissue repair in your body. So it has these amino acids that are incredible to like, and it also is broken down already. So it absorbs and it works fast. Um, I also love MCT oil. I, Nutiva makes an MCT, organic MCT oil. I take a tablespoon of that before my coffee and it goes right through your liver into your brain to wake you up for energy. It's like amazing. Then I do a green juice. Um, usually my younger daughter has to make them for me these days, but um, yeah, better. So basically that, um, I love the green juices and I'll just do celery some days or cucumber, or celery, cucumber, lemon, ginger is my favorite. So it's just simple. It's not expensive. I juice and I drink it right away. Um, Then I would say that lunch is usually plant-based because I like to keep my energy high and I feel like, you know, I don't want to weigh down my digestion. So I do a lot of salads um, with legumes and beans and I love edamame. I love soy. I know that that is a big, still a controversial topic with cancer and breast cancer, but it's a phytoestrogen. And A lot of my people that I talk to, breast cancer doctors, and are very strong proponents of it um, because it it does help excrete extra estrogen out of the body. So not to be afraid of it, just get clean sources of soy because it's GMO and not eat it all the time is a great, you know, so I 
That's me. I'm always doing protein, protein, protein all throughout the day. Um, the afternoon is Tulsi tea, organic India Tulsi tea. It's an adapted herb, holy basil. It's one of my all time favorites. It's like 1.6 grams of holy basil. It's an, it adapts to your stress level. So, so fucking amazing. <laughs> Excuse me. I didn't mean to say fucking. Then you, dinner is usually animal protein. Um, again, lots of hydration with my ultimate replenisher, you know, making sure I'm hydrated. Then it's animal protein because my family eats it. I eat a side of it. I Half of my plate is leafy greens, non-starchy veggies. Then it's like, I'm always having carbs, like gluten-free carbs because they're full of minerals again, you guys, you know, hydration and they calm down the central nervous system. And then it's a side of my animal protein. I'm not a big sugar girl anymore because of the juices. When I get my greens and I get my veggies and I get my hydration, I don't crave sugar. But if I were to, I would have a bowl of berries. I'd maybe sprinkle some monk fruit on it to get them sweeter potentially. Um, and bear, you know, a cup of berries is like eight grams of fiber. So it's a hugely anti-inflammatory day, mostly. Um, I also love turmeric, you know, curcumin. Um, I do those lattes a lot of times. Curcumin is one of my all-time favorite go-to supplements also in terms of its anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antioxidant, antiviral. It's like so amazing for you. So especially during these times with COVID um, and my supplement list is quite extensive and quite long. So you might not want to, maybe we could send that to you, but um, you know, that's, that's kind of my day. And I, do I, you ever drink? I do drink <laughs> and I do, <laughs> I drink. I drink on the weekends with my friends. Um, I drink what do you tequila. Drink? And because tequila is a happy drug, you know, I mean, happy alcohol. So wine lately is not agreeing with me. Sugar is not, I don't know what's happening, but it's really doing a number on me. Um, I have been noticing from a lot of clients that their glucose numbers are really high. Their, their thyroids aren't working so well because of the stress. And I've just, a lot of my women clients are being able to lose weight because glucose is too high. They're not digesting and being able to like, you know, get excrete sugar out of the body very well. And thyroids aren't working. So metabolism isn't working so well. So, you know, wine has become, you know, all alcohol is turns to formaldehyde when it enters the body kind of sucks, but it's not so good for us. And, but, you know, again, I do drink and I do eat pizza and I do eat pasta and I will have, you know, I'm a bread girl. So I will have carrot cake or lemon loaf or things like that. But, but I don't have, I have them maybe 20% of the time. And sourdough, you told me once. I love sourdough. Good. It's fermented. So it's, yeah, fresh sourdough is great to eat. If you, you know, it doesn't have as much gluten it, and then the gluten-free breads and the gluten-free like crackers and all that stuff can be kind of crappy out there because it's with all these additives in it. Um, the same with those, you know, fake meats, the impossible and burgers and beyond burgers, they have so much shit in them. It's almost better to go to a real grass fed burger. So again, it's kind of about going back to the real food as much as possible. Yeah. So Amy, in at Lenny Cohen Foundation, how are you implementing diet and nutrition is there because so much of this is preventative right so we don't yeah. invent like you really got involved in like preventative care very yeah. early on and that was something that like people treat the problem they don't treat the cause and so this is a lot about how you prevent yourself from getting into a situation yeah how are how do you think about nutrition so the women that come through our clinics are healthy women. They're women who are at increased risk for cancer. So you're talking about young, middle-aged, any age women who like has it in their family, you know, carries a genetic mutation. So when we, when they see doctors, they see a gynecologic oncologist, a breast oncologist, a genetic counselor, there's genetic testing if wanted, needed, necessary. And then there's an entire lifestyle component where they see, um, therapists, they see, they have access to nutritionists because the theory is, is this, it's keeping your body as healthy as possible and learning from the actual experts on what that means. So a small example would be, and then we offer, um, you know, these kinds of things and in person. So Alyssa touched on soy and, you know, the controversy around it. We had this incredible 
small mini symposium with like 50 women um, where we brought in an epidemiologist oncologist who spent the last 30 years of her life. She's a Chinese, she's Chinese from China, a Chinese doctor, but then moved to the States and her research spanned China and then the States on the actual benefits of soy and its preventive like properties against women's cancers. And so it was like a, you know, this question was, we, we named the topic, there's no soy in soy sauce. <laughs> Cause that was like one of the big takeaways that these women were like, wait a minute, there's no soy in my soy sauce. But it was, what is soy and the benefits? What are the misnomers about it? And how do you get it? So Alyssa also mentioned edamame. Like if you wanna add soy in your diet, that is the way to do it. Cause most of the soy milk you will drink and you'll grab off the shelf have all the other crap in it, right? But edamame is literally just soy and sprinkle it on everything. And so to answer your question, it's looking at and bringing people to the table to talk one-on-one -on -one and to talk in groups of, you know, well, let's answer these questions on what you can put in your body, what you can do. And then of course, the entire psychosocial component of how do you live your life? Um, and then, you know, the biggest thing I say is know your normal. So, you know, know where your normal is, which by the way, changes all the time because our normal at 18, 19 is not the same as our normal at 45, 55, 60 years old. But, and then when you start to you feel your body straying off of that, what does that mean? What can you do to get back to that centered normal space? Um, and that might be everything Alyssa is talking about. That might actually mean going and seeing a doctor and seeing, well, why am I thrown off? What's going on? And it can be, you know, a whole range of reasons. But that idea that women, we take so little time for ourselves and to figure out where are we, where's our body, you know, where should it be at? Entire body. And then when we get out of that, you know, how do you deal with it? So, you know, my mom had diarrhea for an entire year before her cancer diagnosis and her take on it was, I just, you know, I'm just stressed out. Like life's crazy. Well, maybe that was the reason, but most likely not. Um, it was her body telling her over and over again, something's wrong in here. So, you know, she was never taught to listen to herself, take care of herself, put her mask on first. Um, that sounds, you know, funny nowadays, but put your oxygen mask on first, because if we don't take care of ourselves and we spend all of our energy taking care of all those around us, which as women, we mostly do, um, we, you know, we lose out and then everyone else does too. So I think it's, it's sort of changing the, the, the way we think about health and wellness and like we're doing now is thinking about how do we start healthy and stay healthy as opposed to get sick and figure it out. Um, Cause like you said, that puts us immediately into fight or flight mode, which jacks up your stress level and jacks up your inability to then get back to center. Um, I hope that answered the question. That was a great answer. Okay, we've got a bunch of answer. questions and then I have questions. So let's I get I love it. that part about getting back to center. Yeah. Because we don't know what we don't know what center is. We do. If you ask anybody, it's like, "What is your center?" You don't know what it feels like, right? Well, I think we just don't take any time to figure that out, and take any time to say, "Wait, I feel really good. Like right, right now, I feel really good. I feel healthy. I feel strong. I feel beautiful. Yeah. I feel stable in my marriage because we fucking worked on it, you know, for twenty years. I feel like I have the friends in my life who I really love and care about. And the ones I don't are sort of, you know, that was a nice thing about COVID. You're like, eh, whatever. <laughs> but I think that's really important. And I think that we just don't take the time to do that and to know, well, you know, I haven't had dessert in a really long time and I feel a lot better because I just don't like, I just, I haven't craved it. And once you sort of take all that sugar out, my body's not craving it. And I'm like, my God, I feel better. I stopped jogging and my neck doesn't hurt. Well, I'm not going to jog anymore, you know, right. as opposed to saying, no, it's the way to burn calories, you know, which I've had in my head at different times in my life. And I think that that's the crux of it. It's listening to your own self as opposed to just listening to everyone else all the time. And it sounds so simple, but it's, oh. it's that's hard, yeah. hard. That's um, okay. We have a question about explaining the difference between inflammation and inflammatory. We hear a lot on it, but what not they're not completely clear on what the definitions are. 
I would say they're the same, you know, inflammation is, is when, you know, the body is inflamed um, because, you know, the tissues and, and you've been eating poorly, tissues are inflamed, cells, you know, are not healthy. Um, and, in, you know, you're in either, I, I say they're the same. So you're, in, you know, inflamed, you're inflammatory, you're have inflammation. So it's- How do you know if you have inflammation or you're inflamed? You don't feel good, really. You don't feel good. You're puffy. Um, you know, nothing feels right. Your head is foggy. I mean, there's so many. Like mentally, you're not thinking clear. Your gut isn't working properly. You're not going to the bathroom regularly. You know, your joints are hurting. Um, there's, I mean, it's there's a laundry list. I mean, if you feel any kind of, really, I would say, you know. People, if they just body ache, feel any kind of body ache, digestion isn't feeling good, head just feels foggy, you're inflamed. Somebody asked about your suggestions for kids and camp and snacks and food. And did you have anything that you recommend for, for kids? Yeah, I guess it depends. And on us, by the way, when yeah. you're out and about all day, what should you do throw you in your bag? Do you snacks around yeah. you? Like, what do you? Oh yeah, Alyssa go? has a yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have a seed bar that I sell that I make and sell and ship out across the country. But um, there are a couple bars that I do love on the market um, that are low in sugar. So Elemental Superfood Bar is one. It does have to be refrigerated, so it can be a little bit of a pain with camp stuff. But Tosi Protein Bites is a great kid one, um, low in sugar as well. So try to go, you know, I like those two bars. Um, you know, going back to the typical snacks of nuts and, you know, a handful of nuts or some really clean almond or nut butter packets and celery carrots. I mean, I feel like that kind of sounds boring. But um, again, trying to go back to the real food as much as possible, you know? And also I think for us, I mean, if they eat breakfast at home and you're serving them something healthy and they're eating dinner at home and they're serving, you know, maybe lunch isn't or camp food isn't the end all. Like I hope that women and moms don't go crazy over having to have it be all perfect and unless the kid has a reaction to things. And sometimes when you, well, your kids, the only one with carrots and, you know, celery in their lunch, they end up eating everyone else's lunch Thank anyway. So <laughs> I'll do it in moderation. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you're going to do potato chips, uh, I, there's a Rusty's brand of potato chips that I love. So I love potato chips, <laughs> which is just sea salt and potatoes. Right. So, yeah. Another kid question. Uh, I mean, uh, this isn't actually your area of expertise, but we'll ask it anyway. <laughs> if somebody wants to know, is there a calorie recommendation for kids? So dependent oh, on so height hard. and weight yeah. and activity level, right? Yeah, it just, yeah, it does. I mean, I I hate the calorie question, period. I just, I don't- Something you should be thinking about? No. I think, you know, if you're eating real food, like you're not, you're going to burn those calories. Your body knows how to metabolize them and burn them. If you're eating processed food, you know, and crappy food, yes, that's a calorie issue. Like that your body doesn't really know what to do with all those chemicals and those additives and fillers, you know, cause it has to, it ha they're all processed through the liver and then have to be excreted out. But it's, it, it takes a lot for the body to like go, what the hell are you giving me here? So that's when you worry about calories. But when you eat real food, you can't, you don't have to worry about calories. Because a perfect example is I had told this story, I think before about, you know, the, how much transit time to get through your small intestine. Yeah. It was interesting This Zach Bush, who's a phenomenal functional doctor in Virginia. He, not that, not that I'm gonna tell the story about the transit time, but the kid, he gave the kids like a plant-based meal of 800 calories and he gave them two pieces of pizza that were 800 calories. The kids, the college kids were like, holy crap, I have to eat so much to get to 800 calories with the plant-based meal. And it was just two pieces of pizza for 800 calories with that, you know, with that. So it was just, it, that's what it's all about, sort of. Okay, I'm going to ask as we are in the last, two minutes here. Could you tell people where to find you, what you've got? You know, I know you, ha you have a book, you have a new book that you're writing. So 
and where people can find you, Amy, if they want to listen to the team or get involved with Linning Cone Foundation. So you guys, uh, you know. Absolutely. Is it easy? Go ahead, Alyssa. It's just at alyssagoodman.com. I'm on Instagram and um, I have a website. I have a newsletter that I send out. I have a recipe tip and a health, a recipe and a health tip every Tuesday. And I do ship my super seed bars across the country. And yes, I am working on a new book about, you know, just the power of anti-aging, like how, you know, we really don't have to succumb to these health issues and, and wait and have all these issues that we think, ah, oh, this is gonna happen because we're getting older. Um, we can really have a beautiful life, you know, as we age, so. Love that. For me, it's the lincohenfoundation.com, um, the-team.com and Instagram. And um, I think we're on Facebook. I don't know how to use Facebook, but <laughs> Did you say you're doing a membership now? Yeah, it seems it's starting going to be um, a membership-based website and I want to really think about it as a community for mostly women who are just really interested in health and wellness. Um, Alyssa's done a ton of articles and put up information for us. And the, the crux of it is, is expert-based scientific information. So there's a lot out there. Um, I think there's a lot of fluff and complete misinformation out there about in this sort of wellness space. And so in, to me, it's about getting your information from a source that is credible. Um, so that's what I'm, that's where we are. That's what we do. And that's what we're all about. Thank you both so much. I learned so much. I have so much work to do. <laughs> so we can all look like Alyssa. <laughs> look like Alyssa. No, you don't want to. You, you don't know, want to be obsessed like me. I so. want my insides and my outsides to both look healthy and young as I get older. So I appreciate your time and your expertise. You. Amy, this was so fun. Pleasure. I always wanted to do this. So thank you for yeah, me, thank you for having me on your podcast. So, yeah, and I haven't inter I've interviewed Alyssa so many times in this forum, but I've never interviewed you for the like, podcast. So we have to do. That. I know that's crazy. We have to. I do know. That. I know. Maybe because I feel like I have. But I know. <laughs> properly. Thank you both. Yeah, I'm gonna guys. One. I will put yeah. this online, and we'll live on the second tip. Okay. Sounds, Sounds good. So anybody who missed it can, and then um, I'll try to put in any of the details into the blog post. Yeah. Just let me know if you need any details. Awesome. Thank you so awesome much. Thank you, everybody. Okay, bye, guys. Bye. So nice bye. to meet you. You too.